Medical professionals have read it. Have you ever had a patient so lacking in common sense, you wondered how they made it this far? If so, what is your story? I used to be a medical oxygen tech, mostly doing in-home work. One guy was on such a high concentration that he would have drawn nearly zero oxygen from breathing regular atmosphere. This required two heavy-duty machines hooked up in tandem just to keep him barely alive. This was explained thoroughly to him and his wife with full signed documentation of every conversation. They'd shut one machine off because they decided it was too loud. He'd take his mask off because he decided it was too cold. She would unplug the hose if she decided it was in the way. So on and so on. Literally, everything you could think of that would restrict or cut off his oxygen intake. Then they would panic and call our emergency service when he started to have a reaction to no oxygen intake. I lived not even five minutes away, right beside our EMS fire station, and the call would always come to me to fix the machines at random times of the day and night, three to seven days a week. They refused to call emergency services because they didn't want to make a scene. This went on for ages, well over 18 months, until he was having trouble sleeping one night and shut the machines off before going back to bed. It's been years, and I still see the wife around town. She always glares at me as if I'm the one who caused his demise. I'm a vet. A few years ago, I had a client bring his young cat in, complaining of lethargy. Besides being a bit underweight, the physical exam was unremarkable, so I asked more questions about the cat's diet. Me. What do you feed the cat? Owner. Online trendy raw food brand. Me. How is his appetite? Does he finish what you feed him? Owner. Yes, he always eats everything. Me. How much do you feed him? Owner. Half of cup. Me. Once or twice daily. Owner. Once every three or four days. Me. You only feed your cat twice a week? Owner. I believe in a more natural feeding approach. And based on my research, that's how often cats eat in the wild. This owner was slowly starving his cat to death based on some bizarre idea he'd made up watching National Geographic. I had to explain to him that domestic cats are not tigers and that small wild cats eat 10 to 20 small meals daily. Surprise, surprise, the cat's lethargy and weight improved with regular feeding. I'm in the ER. So many stories. The one that left me dumbfounded was a woman brought in by her sister for pelvic cramps, amenorrhea for three months. Lo and behold, she's pregnant. The sister informs me that she sleeps with the Brazilian construction workers building the condo complex next door. I ask if they have any questions. The patient asked me if her baby would come out speaking Spanish. After a long pause and her sister staring at the ceiling, I told her no, because they speak Portuguese in Brazil. The patient seemed relieved, and the sister hustled her out of the ER before I could discharge her. Rural ER doc here. 35-year-old female walks in with right-sided jaw slash neck swelling. I think it happened because I ate some meat yesterday that my body is reacting to. Ten minutes later. Oh yeah, and I accidentally swallowed a bee and it stung me in my mouth right before this happened. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Saw a chart once where a person came in for a burn to their eye. They told the doctor they read online that warm milk in the eye can help with irritation and their eyes were irritated. So they boiled milk and then poured it in their eye. Burned it all. Optometrist here. If I had a nickel for every time someone said they use urine for eye drops, I would have 10 cents which is not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Not me, but my wife, who is a vet, had a client who got mad at her because he didn't realize that once he neutered his dog, he wouldn't be able to breed it. As someone who worked at a vet office, I am completely unsurprised. We once had to explain what smegma was to very embarrassed owners of a new puppy who brought him in for discharge around his penis. Not to mention the countless people who bring their cats in asking about a lump only to be told it's a nipple. And then you occasionally get the inevitable, but he's a boy, and have to explain that male mammals have nipples too. Like, ma'am, you are married. Have you never noticed your husband has nipples before? This happened in med school on my OBGYN rotation. Patient. Who's the baby gonna look like? Me. What do you mean? Patient. Well, is it gonna look like the dude who got me pregnant or the guy who's been intimate with me the last few months? Me. Utterly speechless. The baby should look like the people who conceived it. This person is now a parent. Lady brings her baby into the ER with a rectal temperature of 103. The kid's heart rate is rapid and looks unwell. Refuses all medications. Says she doesn't believe in them and wonders why her herbal tea, she brought a jug of it, isn't working. Wants us to just check her out. Thinks a children's emergency room just checks them out. Try to explain why the kid needs an NSAID. Keeps refusing. Says she doesn't know what's in it. I bring up the fact she had her kid in a hospital and that she recovered medication herself, IV, epidural, etc. Doesn't budge. Only concerned for herself, 
told her that when the kid has a seizure or goes unresponsive and you call 911, you can expect the medics to give the kid everything it needs regardless of whether you like it or not. Only when the doctor threatened to contact social services for child endangerment and abuse did she start to listen. For like five whole seconds, left against medical advice, people like this exist and breed. Had an adult male patient who needed a Foley catheter. His mother was in the room, and they both lived together in the backwoods of Tennessee. I informed them both of the order for a catheter, how it works, and why it was needed. His mother stated, well, he's still a virgin, and I'm not sure I'm comfortable with his virginity being taken in a hospital. My sister told me a story of a woman with chronic blisters and lesions on her lips. They couldn't figure out what it was for weeks. It would heal and come back. Heal and come back. Turns out she would jam out on like three bags of salt and vinegar chips a day for weeks at a time until the sores hurt too bad to continue. Then she'd go to the doctor. Not me, but my mother would pick up shifts as a nurse sometimes in labor and delivery and she had met a handful of women who didn't know the baby was going to be coming out of their vaginas. Like, no clue. My mom usually said something like, how you got it in is how it's coming out, honey. This was the late 90s, early 2000s. I worked ED for 10 years, every day. Every day people come in, and it shocks you how they manage to evade death for that long. One of the worst was we had a guy come in. He was a twin. He told us he needed to get checked for STDs because his sister apparently just got one. We, of course, had to ask if he had been intimate with her, and he said no. But they were twins, so what she has, so does he. After a collective sigh of relief that this wasn't some weird scenario, we had to educate him that it is not how it worked at all. Had an 18 or 19-year-old girl come in my ER with some complaint that required an x-ray. It's standard that we do a urine pregnancy test before imaging any female of childbearing years. She insisted she'd never had sex, and there was zero possibility of pregnancy. We did the test anyway, and it resulted that she was pregnant. We did a blood pregnancy test to confirm the result since she insisted she couldn't possibly be pregnant because she'd never had sex. That was positive too. We gave her a few minutes to herself to figure out what happened. And when I returned to check on her a short time later, she asked me if she could get pregnant even though her boyfriend didn't go all the way in. She 100% believed that as long as his penis wasn't entirely in her, it didn't count as sex. It took nearly a half hour of explaining reproduction to her for her to understand that whether it's halfway in or all the way in, sperm travel. 73 here. Former clinical microbiologist long ago. Still, I found myself all over the clinical lab at times. Not just infectious disease. So one day this 20-something guy, wife and mom in tow, walks in with a paper request for semen analysis, pre-computer era. Okay, not the most comfortable encounter, but I'm a professional and did this drill many times. He had not been briefed by the doctor and had no idea how establishing infertility in males was done. Well, okay, a challenge then. I took him aside and, using standard medical terminology, told him how a diagnosis is made and what he needed to do to provide a specimen. He couldn't, wouldn't believe that I was asking him to masturbate into that container. Astonished, then he played dumb as if the word was unfamiliar to him. We looped through the medical terms and procedure again, and I eventually resorted to every word I knew to describe the act. It was like a comedy bit. A half hour later, he emerged from the toilet with two inches of urine in the cup. God almighty. The report went back, patient provided improper specimen. Optometrist here. Patient booked in for an emergency appointment with a raging red eye. Clearly very painful. Look under the microscope and the cornea is really not happy, wobbly reflexes, haziness. The works. Me. What happened? Patient. It's my niece's wedding this Saturday, and I wanted to tint my eyelashes to match my hair and the color scheme of the wedding, light blue, so I used the same dye for both to match the color. Me. Does that hair dye contain ammonia by any chance? Patient. I think so. Do you think my eye will be better by Saturday? Will it match the color scheme? Me. Unless you can convince them to change the color scheme to red, no. Edited because I read a comment about healing crystals, and now I remember a story from a colleague. Patient attends a routine test complaining of gradually reduced vision, which turns out to be due to cataract. My colleague offers referral for surgery. No need, exclaims the patient. I know what I need for this. I have lapis lazuli at home. Six weeks later, came back for the referral. Second edit for remembering the first story that made me question my sanity. Elderly patient attends with concerned family members because the patient ran over a pop-up tent on the side of the road that the telephone engineers use to protect themselves from the rain. Luckily, no one was hurt as the worker was on lunch. Worried as to how the elderly driver missed seeing a large, red and white tent in the middle of the day, 
It was then that the elderly relative admitted to having spent the last three years driving from memory. Plenty. Although the one that always sticks in my mind is a patient I met during my early years on a palliative care ward suffering from terminal cancer. She was only in her early 30s, and the only reason she had gotten so far gone was that she had relied on the healing power of crystals rather than, you know, chemotherapy. EMS here. Had a diabetic in his 30 to 40s who refused to take insulin since 2012. It was 2020 at the time. When I took his blood sugar, it only read as HI, meaning it was over 700 for the glucometer to not read it. Upon seeing this, he asked me if that was high and then went, Is this because of all the ice cream I ate? Played Facebook Messenger video with his girlfriend the entire time. Met him later in the parking lot after he got discharged. And it took this man less than 50 paces from the ER door to rip off his bandage covering his IV and play with the IV wound until it started bleeding all over the place again. Knocked on our ambulance door and asked for a band-aid to fix it. We had to walk him back into the ER and bandaged his entire arm with gauze so that Hopefully, by the time he got it off, it would have clotted enough for him to not end up exsanguinating himself. Not a personal experience, but one from a colleague of mine. I only saw the pics. So, this 60-something-year-old suffers from an acute complication and gets a pacemaker to solve the problem. Everything goes normally and as planned. He recovers, every care and med that he needs to take are prescribed, explained, and medical appointments with a cardiologist are scheduled so that he may get the follow-up he needs. The man then proceeds to never show up to any appointment and never answer any calls from the hospital to know of him and reschedule. This went on for around three years. Until he shows up without former warning and asks to talk with the doctor that did the procedure to put his pacemaker. People are weirded out. But seeing that on that day the doctor was present and this patient was in clear distress. They talk to him and manage a couple of minutes to have the doctor check on him. Inside the appointment room, the doctor notices that this man is wearing a bra inside his shirt. The man explains he has been wearing his daughter's bra for three months after his problem got worse. The shirt is asked to be taken off and there he stands. The shirtless man wearing his daughter's bra, showing off the pacemaker that should have been kept inside his body, dangling outside of it, being held by the left bra cup, with a big infected open wound above it with the pacemaker leads still inserted into his veins and connected to his heart. Nobody has any idea how the man let that situation come to be or how he didn't succumb to sepsis or any other health problem that may appear for that matter. I don't know if a cleaner in a hospital counts, but this one time, I got to work early on a Saturday morning, and we immediately received a request for help from the ER and got sent over by my boss. When I got there, the first thing I heard was yelling from this guy behind one of the curtains. He was shouting at the nurses, don't touch my private area, and I didn't use any substances. Then I smelled iron in the air, and then I found out there was blood all over the hallway, handprints and blood against the wall, Almost the entire floor was covered in blood, with actual puddles in some places. What happened? The guy pulled out his catheter, causing arterial bleeding, and decided to run away from the nurses who were trying to help him. It seems like he lived through that. I had never seen that much blood before that day, nor after. I'm a pharmacist. One evening shift, I was working a relief shift. Not my usual pharmacy. A man comes in looking distressed. Man, I had sexual relations with a woman I do not intend to pursue a long-term relationship with. Yes. He said it just like that. Me. Okay. I'm assuming there was an accident or it was unprotected. How long ago did it happen? Man. Last night at 7 p.m. on the couch. Whoa, too much information. I just need to know the approximate time to know if Plan B will work. Me. We have this medication called Plan B, and since the incident happened within 72 hours. Man. Oh yes, I got that for her already yesterday right after we finished. We want to know if there is anything we can do to know if she is pregnant now. Me. Unfortunately not. She'll have to wait three weeks or so to see if she gets her period, and if she doesn't, then she can do a pregnancy test then. Theoretically, you could do a blood test for faster results, but that would also not be until a couple of weeks at least. Man, we're just really anxious because she really doesn't want to be pregnant. Is there anything that she can take to prevent the pregnancy? Any multivitamin? Minerals? Food? Me. She's already taken it, which was the plan B. There are some other options, but those are prescriptions. And no. There are no over-the-counter products she can take. Man, what about me? Is there anything I can take now to prevent the pregnancy? Any multivitamins or minerals? Me. No, sir. There isn't anything you can take now. I overheard a conversation between a nurse, a doctor, and a patient in the ER. They were trying to figure out if he was very foolish or had a head injury. It was both hilarious and sad. He kept telling them that he was there for a hurt leg. He couldn't explain why his leg was hurt, how it was hurt, or how he got there nearly anything. 
I heard them talking in a hallway to each other. The nurse was convinced he hit his head. The doctor said, no, he is just not bright. Turns out the doctor was right. They got a hold of the guy's wife. She basically told them in the hallway he is always this foolish, and if she leaves him, he would get lost in his own house and starve. Eat it. It sounded like his leg was visibly injured or swollen. But when asked what happened or how it feels, he gave nonsensical answers. Not like slurring, but in a regular foolish voice. It feels hurt. I was talking to Jimmy, and we were doing our usual work and my leg hurt. Doctor. Did something happen? What is the work? Him. Something always happens. You know how it goes. I just want my leg fixed. This was one of the funniest yet cutest ones. I was a student doing a shift in andrology reproductive health. Doctor. So you're trying to have kids but not managing to. So do you have any other kids? Patient. Yes, doctor. I have one. Doctor. Okay, so we need to do this and this and that. Patient. Okay, great. Then he proceeds to visit him and stuff, after which he goes away. After a couple of seconds, he knocked on the door again, saying, Hello, doctor. My wife told me that it would be relevant to you that the son I have is adopted, but that makes no difference to me. I always considered him my own son. Paramedic. Elderly woman complains that her mouth is dry, and she felt a bit dizzy climbing the stairs earlier. Go through the whole rigmarole of getting a medical history vitals, more detail on symptoms. Ask her what she's had to drink today. A cup of tea, 10 hours ago. Any water? No. Guess what fixed it within 5 minutes? A woman called 911 because a cougar attacked her cat. She thought we could help the very clearly deceased cat. A man called 911 because a cow bit him. He didn't want EMS or an assessment or anything. A man called 911 for an itchy rear end. Took him to the ED because we have to. The doctor asked the patient if he had put the cream on his rear end that he gave him last time. The patient said no. Next time the patient called us for his itchy rear end, I offered to put the cream on his rear end for him. He declined. Took him back to the ED. Not me, but my sibling. I don't think he'd mind me sharing the story just on the off chance it prevents someone else from making this mistake. Lots of surgeons have a similar story. But thankfully, this one doesn't end in someone's death. Parents claim their child hasn't eaten anything before surgery, as they were carefully directed. Turns out they thought the surgical team was just being cruel to their child. And when she said she was hungry that morning, they detoured on their way to the surgical center and got her a full southern breakfast. She nearly passed away, aspirating biscuits and gravy. I've rarely seen my brother so angry and disgusted. Somehow biscuits and gravy looks even more nauseating the second time around. And he was just recounting what had happened. I have no doubt he tore a strip off the parents once their five-year-old was stabilized, and they probably still felt justified and angry at the surgeon for telling them what they could and could not feed their child right before anesthesia. Edit. The parents did, in fact, feel justified and hard done by. Although, as far as I know, they didn't express anger at my brother. Knowing him, they didn't get a word in edgewise. Definitely no acknowledgement or realization that they could easily have killed their own child, or that they'd made a bad decision. I remember they were annoyed by her whining for food. Woman comes in with no prenatal care to labor and delivery and labor. OBGYN resident taking a history. Do you have any allergies? Patient. Yes, I'm allergic to water. Resident. Okay. What kind of reaction happens when you drink water? Patient. Oh, it makes me urinate. Yeah, lady, that's a feature, not a bug. I work in clinical research at a hospital. Basically, for patients who have cancer and don't have other standard of care options, clinical trials, experimental treatment are a viable option for many. Some people have a negative view of research, but it's highly regulated and not as scary as it sounds. We go through the consent form with this patient who has a history of substance abuse. We don't know everything about this new medication, but one thing we do know is that using certain substances while taking this drug will make your heart explode in layman's terms. This patient promises they're off the substance and that they totally won't use it while they're on the trial. Two weeks later, they relapse, and well, you can figure out the rest of the story. Subscribe and like if my content is interesting to you. I post new video every day.